Hello, Charlotte and Grace here from One No Stress Connect. We are so excited today as we are being joined by Anik Akbar, who specializes in web design. Anik will be taking today's masterclass, sharing his experiences about how he got into the realm of web design and also sharing just how important it is for every startup, small business, or even a large business to have an effective and robust web design that truly reflects their branding and also makes them discoverable. So, Anik, thank you very much for joining us today. How are you feeling? Cool. I'm feeling very well, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. No worries, mm -hmm. no worries. Yeah. So, Anik, we would really love to just hear from yourself how you got into web design and if you could just share your experiences just taking us up until now. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, I actually got into web design um, the same way a lot of people do and I kind of self-taught myself. Um, a lot of the core principles before going through some structured learning. So um, my background in education isn't anything to do with web design, funnily enough. Uh, I studied as an engineer. Um, I actually uh, studied all the way up to PhD level in engineering. Um, and then I worked for a number of different companies um, after I graduated. Um, uh, I, worked, I did small contract jobs, some longer term employment. Um, but after a while, I felt um, slightly, um, I would I like to say disillusioned, but um, <laughs> I started to lose the passion of, uh, of what I was doing. A lot of the stuff that I was doing at the beginning was very exciting, it involved a lot of big data projects, mm -hmm. um, IT implementation, and loads of really, really cool companies. And I learned and I took a lot from those experiences. But towards um, uh, 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 the end of my tenure at my latest employer, I found that I felt like I wanted something more, um, a new challenge, more, more or less. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of investigated the, uh, the, the, the realm of web design. I started self-teaching myself some principles. And then eventually when it got to the stage where I decided that I wanted to run my business, web design held a, a central role in that, in that field. So I think um, that's more or less how I got into web design at the beginning. Fantastic. Can you tell us a bit more about your journey from employee to entrepreneur? Okay, yeah, cool. So um, I was working as a business analyst. Um, I worked at um, O2 um, and Make It Cheaper, U Switch. Uh, I did a stint at PlayStation as well, mainly doing IT implementation and data analysis um, for those different companies. So I was basically living behind spreadsheets for about three or four years. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, I love numbers and I love data and um, mm -hmm. uh, it's been a key part of my education as well. Um, yeah. So naturally it was a, a home ground for me, so to speak. Um, but the other side of um, having a background in engineering also led me to want to have a building aspect of my work. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go through projects and see a natural end product. Um, yes, of course, as part of working in a big team, I played a key role in seeing projects from um, start to finish, but my educational background led me to have a sense of involvement in the entire process from the genesis of a concept to the proof at the end. So I was able to see projects all the way through and I kind of lost that in my employment roles. Mm -hmm. So having the need to be a part of um, a, a longer term strategy where I can see things build, I can have an end product was very important to me. And I felt like when I was an employee in my, in the roles that I was finding myself in, I wasn't able to express that. Um, I've had a passion for technology and I had um, the, the need to build things. So um, I decided to kind of investigate um, web design and then I started to um, consider opening up my own consulting firm with web design as a key central element of that. So, I mean, there are obviously uh, some other kind of things that were important in helping me make that jump from employee to um, uh, entrepreneur. I mean, I was, on a, I was on, a, on a good salary. I had great stability. I had pretty decent career prospects. Um, so there was an element of risk, but I think a key thing to consider when you are make, considering making that jump is it's not just about having the, the intention to want to become an entrepreneur. I think that decision has to be based on a chemical formula of loads of different things that yeah. all have to be in place. I was fortunate enough to have already had bought my house. I, mm -hmm. I, I, didn't, I wasn't married, I didn't have any children, I didn't, didn't have any kind of dependence. So 
financially I was in a good situation. I had some money saved up as well. Um, mm-hmm. I knew that I could um, live on um, for, for a good period of time until my business started taking um, a, a, a good round of turnover. So when I realized that, look, I, I'm losing a little bit of passion for my full-time job. Um, yeah. I want to experience new challenges, um, but I'm also in a stage where financially I think I can do it. Mm-hmm. That was the time when I decided, like, you know, um, let me go on a, on a quick holiday. And I, took, yeah. and I came back from holiday and I, and I decided, okay, fine, it's definitely what I want to do. And I kind of effectively handed in my notice and I said, look, it's time for right. a new, new, new chapter. Brilliant. Must have been very exhilarating at the time you had in your notice. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, um, I thought that it would be quite scary, but it wasn't at all. Um, mm-hmm. I gave a lot of thought. I didn't do. I didn't make the decision off a whim. Um, I thought about it very carefully. Um, it took me about three or four months to to get to the decision where look, I definitely want to um, want to make a big change. I understood the risks. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, but by the time I decided to finally hand in my notice, that was when it became real uh, for me personally. And I realised, okay, fine, I've take, I've crossed that line now, um, and I've made the conscious decision to to leave my my job. But at that point, I felt very confident actually, because I felt like um, I had trust in my own judgment, and I felt like I I was making the right decision. So yeah, it was exhilarating. I think that would be a, a good word. Yeah. Right. So, Janet. We recognise that there, there is that stark reality that most small businesses just aren't discoverable. And by discoverable, mm-hmm. I mean that you can't find them on any online media platforms, whether it be mm-hmm. social media or having a website presence. So just from your experience, why is it so important to have a website and an effective website design that reflects you and your brand? Um, that's a really good question and it's something that I can probably answer from my own experience mm-hmm. um, because when we first started um, I was I moved into a realm where um, I didn't have a, a whole bunch of customers that I can immediately approach I didn't have any partnerships that can give me referrals right away so the only way really I could think of meeting new businesses and meeting new potential clients was to brand myself online mm-hmm. I think um, um, marketing and communications uh, has remained consistent um, throughout the last 34 years. It's just the fact that the, the modes and the media in which uh, marketing and communications um, is delivered has changed. Mm-hmm. So whereas, I don't know, 20, 30 years ago, um, uh, for, a, I don't know, for a small business like a, like a takeaway or a calf, um, handing out leaflets would have been a great way to find new clients. Yeah. Whereas now people don't regard... Um, uh, uh, paper and printed media as strongly as they do as online media um, mm. really because I think um, people are just less used to receiving media through the mail um, I mean I personally can't remember the last leaflet I saw I can't yeah. remember what it was about <laughs> I can off the, top of yeah. head, off the top of my head I can tell you what I've seen adverts for on on YouTube clips or it's on true. Facebook. I've just got more sense of familiarity with those media. So, I mean, like, um, I think uh, it's, it's important for, uh, for businesses to be seen online because uh, that is the key way that people now start to interact with brands and businesses. Um, mm-hmm. I think a lot, of, a lot more um, prominent businesses in different sectors are leading the way in that. And mm-hmm. that is therefore dictating the, the, the behavior of potential customers. For example, if I start to stop seeing McDonald's adverts on TV and I start to see more and more of their adverts on Twitter, mm-hmm. um, slowly but surely other competition to McDonald's will start following suit. And that overall mm-hmm. has the effect of dictating the, the behavioural characteristics of a potential buyer of McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, it's very, very important for um, businesses across all different industries to be seen online as we shift more and more towards online and digital um, means of communication. Brilliant. Can you um, name any mistakes, uh, top mistakes that you see small businesses doing once they start to transfer their visibility online with regards to websites, things our audience should uh, look out for and try and avoid? Okay. I mean, um, the the biggest mistakes that I see um, go into one of two main kind of areas. Mm -hmm. The first mistake is um, businesses throw money without 
understanding what they should be throwing money at online. Yeah. So um, we've had clients who've come to us and said, look, our online visibility isn't that great um, because, you know, um, we've spent, I don't know, £1,000 a month for the last six months and we haven't had any good traction. And, they, yeah. and our, when, when upon questioning, we asked them, you know, what did you spend the money on? And they would say things like, um, you know, I've done Google AdWords, I've done social media marketing, I've done paid Twitter campaigns, et cetera, et cetera. But um, the, the campaign and the money that was targeted towards the the, the the, the money that was being paid towards their campaigns just wasn't structured mm-hmm. intelligently. So maybe they weren't um, uh, in a position to understand their online demographic before throwing money at their Twitter campaigns or their Facebook mm-hmm. campaigns or their AdWord campaigns. So that's one big mistake that people make. And the other big mistake is that people make crucial errors on their actual website. So mm-hmm. some, some businesses can have a great understanding of their, their end consumer. Um, they know exactly who they target, but, and, and they can have a great budget in place um, mm-hmm. to then deliver them good results. And they can potentially get a lot of good traffic onto their actual website. But upon getting to their website, their website is not able to convert the, the, the leads and the prospects yeah. um, for, for a number of different reasons. The website might not be um, uh, uh, just built properly. It might just not perform mm-hmm. properly. It might not be good, very well visible on, on mobile. So yeah. there's a number of different things uh, um, that they can do from the website point of, thing, uh, point of view. So, I mean, when it comes to mistakes, those are the main mm-hmm. two mistakes. Not structuring marketing campaigns effectively and by yeah. doing the customer analysis and then not being able to convert good leads that come yeah. to the website because of poor web development. Yeah, I think both very useful tips and common mistakes that many people make, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. that we take. Um, they say that one of the barriers is just time, having time to sort of update their website and that kind of thing. Is there any um, advice you can give? Because, you know, most websites, they are quite intuitive. Um, mm-hmm. They don't take a lot of time to update because most of your content will be static anyway. Is there mm-hmm. any sort of more advice you can give on that? Um, I mean, looking after a website, I think, uh, uh, is a pretty big commitment. It does take up a lot of time. Um, I mean, sometimes uh, a small business owner will design a website and they would just say, okay, fine, I've got a website, now I'm online. Mm. Um, But a little bit of time and effort put into that website can actually draw more value from a website. Um, A site, given uh, given what we spoke about a couple of minutes ago about how important it is to be seen online, a website's role is so much more important to um, the, the success of a business in 2016 and 2017 mm-hmm. yeah. um, um, than, than, it, than, than, than it was a few years ago. So, I mean, having a continual effort to evolve the website is actually very important. Now, saying that, it does take up a, a lot of time. Now, there are a number of different things, um, like you mentioned, Grace, that you can do to, to alleviate that. Um, first one would probably be to have a website which isn't built um, hard-coded from the ground up, Mm -hmm. employing the use of a CMS system, a content management system, can actually help business owners themselves to manage the content of their website. So if you are considering building a website and uh, you want to, on an ongoing basis, update the content of the website going forward, Mm -hmm. sometimes um, people are quite insistent that, look, I want a, I don't want a website built on WordPress. I don't want a website built on any sort of template. I want a website that's hard coded from the ground up. Now, mm. I mean, there's a perception that a website that's coded by a developer sitting on a computer mm-hmm. from the ground up is better in some, some way or another than one that is built on WordPress, for example. Yeah. And that not, that's not necessarily true because ultimately the only thing that matters is having a website that can draw value to your business. Now, having a hard-coded website has its strengths and its limitations, yeah? Mm-hmm. The code is a lot more simpler, but the limitations are that if you want anything changed, you can have to go back to that developer. Mm-hmm. And if you're in a situation where you want to have a blog on your website, if you want mm-hmm. to continually update certain bits of content, run promotions, you're not going to be in a position to always communicate with your web developer who might be busy at certain times. Mm-hmm. And web developers are notorious for disappearing once a project is done. Yeah. So it might not be a very sensible thing to do. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there are great platforms out there, um, CMS platforms, WordPress being the most uh, prominent, where um, 
Yeah. The advantage to the developer are the fact that there's great code and resources and functionality and a support community, an open source support mm. community out there, which can help develop great looking and awesome functioning websites. From the business owner's point of view, the advantage is the fact that you get a backend to your website that you can then log into and you can update content and you can um, manage and oversee certain aspects of your, of your website from the back end. So you can look at things like analytics, you can look at things like traffic um, uh, patterns on your website, just to understand how the best way would be to, um, uh, to improve the content and functionality of your website going forward. So I think that's very, very important. So a big way of saving time is to employ a, a CMS um, system uh, on, on, on your website. The other thing um, that's also good is some, some business owners, they try to uh, take the onus of the web build themselves. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, which is, which is uh, commendable, um, of course. And on the face value of it, it might make sense. Okay, you might reason with yourself that, oh, look, I don't need to pay a web developer 500 pounds. I can just develop it myself. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if you're going to end up spending six months trying to get a website up to the standard in which your business deserves, it might make sense just to pay that 500 pounds to someone who's got experience yeah. to just get yeah. it done properly and make sure that it's stable going forward and you don't have any issues. Um, so sometimes hiring a, a, a web developer, um, even on a contractual basis might, might make sense so that you, the business owner can then go ahead and focus on the core aspects and the most important things to do with the business, which is to generate money. Totally um, agree. Yeah, and then the last thing I would suggest is, if you have a blog, for example, on your website and you'd like to update content, um, sometimes it's great just to hire or get a hold of some interns who are just looking for experience. Um, there are loads of different um, uh, uh, students across university, political sciences, who study humanities, and they want to get some experience of, um, of writing in or official publications. So mm -hmm. approaching certain individuals and giving them the opportunity to publish things for your website will be a win-win for both, you know? Um, a lot of times, interns are willing to do that for free just to build their, build their experience. It's a good piece of advice, yes. And I know that many small businesses would love to take that sort of opportunity just to help them out uh, going forward. Mm -hmm. So, um, Anik, as a, an entrepreneur, an inspired entrepreneur, um, mm -hmm hearing you today are there any books or audios that you've read that just keep you spurred on in your entrepreneurial journey um i actually uh, um don't read a lot of non-fiction so mm -hmm. um the, the 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 typical usual suspects of startup um uh, literature um, mm -hmm. i'm actually not familiar with um mm -hmm. i actually re read um a lot of autobiographies um okay. I, so that is a non-fiction actually but um yeah. i read a lot of fiction and autobiographies at best um so uh i read uh, very recently i read um leading by sir alex ferguson okay yeah that was a very very good, influential uh, leader yeah yes a very influential leader in my personal opinion i think he's um uh, one of the greatest um, sporting managers in history Mm -hmm. um, and he has a fantastic track record of cultivating youth and young um, uh, uh, young individuals inside his massive institutions. Yeah. So, and I think um, young people in general, um, when it comes to entrepreneurship and enterprise, mm -hmm. they have a, um, a cutting edge above um, more seasoned people like ourselves who are yeah. sometimes we're stuck in our own way you know, yeah, young yeah. people are they're energetic they're experimental yeah. and understanding how this that is really really important um one of the biggest challenges that we faced in our early days um mm -hmm. is the fact that we had a lack of gray hair on our head and it made it a bit more to yeah to, to win business you know yeah. we were in a meeting and talk to a, a client about um, uh, uh, web and um, online and all this kind of thing. And, and they, they, sometimes we would find that they wouldn't take us seriously because they had experience on us. Yeah. As we're getting a bit older, it's a bit, it's a bit easier. Yeah. But I mean, but the thing is, I was, I'm always um, uh, very, very passionate about um, young people um, mm. and how to cultivate um, uh, the best of their abilities into, uh, into business. Um, 
So that's one book that I read. And the other one that I read a little, a little while ago, um, which uh, is a super good read, was the, was, uh, the Wolf of Wall Street um, by Jordan Belfort. Ah, uh, okay. I've seen the yeah, film, very, read the book, yeah. Yeah, very, very, very good book. Um, the film is more of a, um, uh, a it's a sensationalist yeah. kind of outlook into what actually makes Jordan Belfort tick. But mm. in the book, he goes into a lot more detail about business strategy outside of just banking and finance as well. Yeah. Um, Cause he had a um, invested stake in a lot of really cool companies um, mm -hmm. in his younger days as well. Um, and the different ways that he managed inventory, um, man managed um, human resources, a very, very good book. And that guy is super, super intelligent. And just by reading that book, I, I learned a lot uh, about mm -hmm. how to give businesses a cutting edge from a process point of view. So those mm -hmm. two books, I think, will be really, really highly recommended by myself. Fantastic. We'll, we'll make sure we put the links below for those of you that want to read it. I know I'll be checking mm -hmm. those out as well. Yes. And um, well, Anik, just to conclude this interview, mm -hmm. do you have any actionable tips that you would like to leave with our connectors watching your masterclass today? Uh, actionable tips in terms of web design or yeah, just in design. general? Well, web design and just in general, really, actually. Let, okay, well, um, in terms of web design, um, the, the biggest thing that I would say is without, if, say, for example, we look, we're, we're talking about non-technical non web design stuff. Yes. The main thing I would um, suggest is if you have a website that's already um, in place that you've had for a while, um, Go through your web design and your website in general as a customer would. Put yourself in the position of your, of your potential lead or your potential sale and think about what they would see when they go to your website. Are they likely to contact you? What would you click if you, this was the first time you visited your site? What would you take away from it? And then understand, is your website giving you the value that it really can and should be? Um, so that'll be my main kind of tip because sometimes looking at things from a user experience point of view can highlight a lot of flaws yes. and yeah. Yeah. a lot of improving website um, from, from, from the outside. So that'll be my main uh, kind of tip Brilliant. from a development point of view. Yeah. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, general tips, um, uh, um, main one would be in general, uh, try to be conscientious about everything you know um by conscientious i mean whenever it comes to your business try to take it seriously at all times try to work hard try to be a perfectionist make sure that every little thing that you do is benefiting benefiting you your business and your customer because at the end of the day there's there always has to be um uh, uh, two winners you know your business has to win and the customer has to win as well yeah. Um, yeah. So being conscientious is really, really important. I mean, conscientious is a really broad kind of word, but mm -hmm. having that um, self-discipline to be organized, neat, on time, serious, and always working hard is, is probably the, the, the main thing. And that will always stay with you yeah. um, from day one to five years down the line. Um, it will always be with you. And if you can maintain that, you'll win more customers and you'll get more referrals um, and you'll see more progress um, with, with your business in general. Okay. Brilliant. Well, that's what it's all about. Winning customers yeah. and, yeah, just keeping the customers as well and growing your business. So thank mm -hmm. you very much, Anik, for leading cool. the Masterclass. So um, for our connectors out there, how can they reach you? Um, they can go to all, anyone that's interested in web design or who wants to have a chat. Um, they can go to our website, which is businesswisegroup.co.uk. Mm -hmm. um, there's a phone number on there and there. And yeah, you just give us a call, send us an email, and there's someone from my team, um, maybe even myself, will get in touch and just have a, and we will need to have a good chat. Um, usually we ask everyone to come down to our office, but yeah, I mean, Skype and all that kind of stuff is also um, something that we do a lot. Brilliant. Well, we'll leave all the details just below this video anyway, so they can easily reach out. Cool. To you. No worries. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Well, thank you very much again, Anik, for leading cool. to this. You're welcome. No, thank you very much for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you.